Fresh oil. It's time for Fresh Oil with singer songwriter and pastor Keith Manley. A program designed to minister the gospel of God's grace fresh and to bring fresh oil to the brokenhearted. Now, with today's program, Pastor Keith Manley. Hello, friend. Welcome to the Wednesday edition of Fresh Oil. I'm Keith Manley, and it's just so good to be coming to you today by way of radio, sharing with you uh, some of the truths found in God's Word. I love the story of David and Goliath. Uh, I love to read the, the faith of this young man who, when he faced impossible odds, a giant that was over 10 feet tall, uh, he comes against him in the name of the Lord, and he wins a mighty victory. The story is found in 1 Samuel chapter 17, and uh, beginning with verse 32, David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. And Saul replied, you're not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a boy, and he has been a fighting man from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. And when it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. I love this story when you read the faith of this young boy by the name of, ba of David. You know, as born-again Christians, we got to realize that we are in a battle. This is not a recreation room. We have an enemy, the devil, who desires more than anything else to have your head. And unlike most Christians, Satan does not wage a defensive war. He's on the offensive. He plans his attack. His, his strategies are, are, are sometimes predictable because we see it throughout scriptures. But as a believer, I want you to know something today. You can survive an attack from the devil if you plan ahead and you know how to fight him. Have you ever had a week when it seemed like just one thing after another happened? I mean, it's one of those times when you have one trial. The washing machine breaks down, your, your car, uh, the starter goes out, or it's like two or three things in a row, and you just finally say, this is so obvious. This is the devil trying to steal my faith. Well, you know, before we look at David, I want to share a few things with you today about the battle we face. First of all, we're in a real battle, and unless you prepare for war, you will most likely be overcome. And at some point, it'll happen when you least expect it, the devil can trip you up. But I believe we need to understand, like the Bible tells us, Paul said in Ephesians, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, uh, spiritual wickedness in high places. The, the devil comes to, to steal your faith. Then secondly, we have to declare to God, ourself, and the devil that no matter what comes our way, we're going to stand. The Bible tells us, and having done all to stand, stand firm then. Stand firm then in your faith. Many people throw in the towel and they quit because they never anticipated winning in the beginning. They tried God. Have you ever seen that bumper sticker that says, try God? God is not something to try. God is someone to serve. God is someone who will be there for you no matter what you're facing. And in, in the armor in Ephesians 6, one seemingly insignificant piece that we often overlook is what's called the shoes of the gospel of peace. And those shoes are very important to the Roman soldier because they, they, they were custom made and they contained spikes in the bottom, which were several inches long. And they dug into the ground to give him a firm footing and, and so he could stand no matter what was coming against him. Christians, I want you to know something today. With the gospel of peace, just knowing that God has given us peace through Christ's death upon the cross, that enables us to stand no matter what we are facing with the devil coming against us. You know, the third thing we got to do is you got to learn to fight. The U.S. government will never send its troops into battle until they first go through what we call boot camp. And yet as Christians, so many times we take our new recruits and we throw them on the front line with, with no training and we just throw them out there to battle with the devil. We need a spiritual boot camp. And we need to understand that God equips us with weapons of our warfare. The Bible says the weapons we fight with are not carnal, but they're mighty through prayer for the pulling down of strongholds. Are there strongholds in your life today? Are there things in your life today that are really messing with your, 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 your daily walk, you're messing with your peace of mind? 
messing with your family, messing with your kids. I want you to know something today. God can give you peace. He can give you the victory in that situation that you're facing. Now, in verse 32, when we come here, when David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine, your servant will go up and fight him. Here David comes just to bring provisions for his brothers who are soldiers. David was just a young shepherd. But he comes and he sees Israel trembling in fear because this Goliath, this giant Goliath, has come rearing his ugly head against the armies of Israel, and they were terrified, and David recognized right away what the problem was. They had lost heart. He said, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. David analyzed the situation, and he found the problem in just minutes. They were focusing on the enemy and forgetting about their God. Oftentimes I've asked people, how are you doing today? And they say this, not bad under the circumstances. I usually reply, why are you under the circumstances? God never intended for you and I to be under the circumstances. We are above the circumstances because our God has given us good weapons to fight the enemy with. David recognized that his brothers and the armies of Israel, they had lost hope. They had their faith in their own ability and in their own weapons. David had his faith in his God, the God who delivered him from the lion, the God who delivered him from the bear. You know, when you read verse 33 here uh, in the story, Saul replied, you're not able to go out against the Philistine and, and fight him. You are only a boy, and he's been fighting from his youth. I had a song in 1987 that went number one on the top 40 charts around the country called Spirit Eyes. And, and, and the, the, the story of the song was when you've gone the second mile and still the road seems long. When every turn you take in life, the road that you choose seems wrong. With darkness all around you and you can't see the prize, that's when you look the way God looks and you see through spirit eyes. You see that David was seeing through the eyes of the spirit. He wasn't limiting himself by his own strength or his age. Saul limited him. He said, you're just a boy. David's like, no, you got to know what God has done for me. Even though I'm a boy, he let me defeat the lion. He let me defeat the bear. Friend, I want you to know something today. Don't let other people put limitations around you as saying that you could never accomplish this or you could never dream your big dream. I'm here today to tell you God has a great plan for your life. Sometimes fellow warriors don't like to see uh, you fight the good fight of faith because it makes them look bad. If people are hanging on to doubt and unbelief and all of a sudden you rise up with faith and say, hey, look what God can do. It intimidates them. You know, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 14, Paul said this to the church. He said, if anyone does not obey our instruction in this letter, take special note of him. Do not associate with him in order that he may feel ashamed. You know what Paul's saying there? You can't soar with the eagles if you're running with the turkeys. you got to choose your friends. Let them be people of faith. Let them be people who, who believe, like you do, that God is able to do even the impossible. Now, why would Paul be so bold as to try and pick our friends? Why would, uh, would he say, you better quit hanging around with so-and-so because lazy soldiers can cause you to lose the battle? Friend, pick friends that are people of faith. Pick friends that, that, that believe what God said and, and not just limit themselves by what their own imaginations or their own mind says. In verse 34, it said, But David said to Saul, Your servant's been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came out and carried off the sheep from, from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. You know, sometimes you just got to go back and remember all the good things God has done for you in the past. I, I like to journal. I, 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 uh, I, I'm, I'm writing a book I've been writing for years. I got to finish it. It's called Miracles Happen to Ordinary People. But in that book, I just list all the things I've seen my God do over the last 40 years. He has done such amazing miracles when I refuse to limit him but I trust in him and trust in the things his word declares to me and not just the, the, what people want to limit me to. Now, how do I survive an attack from the enemy? And you will have an attack and it will happen again and again. One of the things I do is I meditate on past victories and not past defeats. That's exactly what David was doing here, friend. He was meditating on his past victories. If you need healing in your body today and you say, Keith, I'm really struggling 
I'm really suffering in my body. I just encourage you today to go back and remember a time when God healed your body, a time when maybe the doctors didn't give you good news, but God came through again and again. You know, the other day in church, I asked everyone to raise their hands who who were a cancer survivor, and I was stunned at how many hands went up in my congregation. These are people that had been given that fatal diagnosis that they had cancer, and they were not going to, to make it, but six months or however long the doctors gave them, and God came through for them. They survived it. But you know what you got to do? You got to meditate on your past victories and not on your past defeats. Verse 37, David actually gave a faith declaration. He said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. You know what David was doing here? He was declaring that the same God who did it back then will do it again. Sometimes we just need to say, do it again, Lord. You were able back then, you haven't changed, and you can still do it. So some of you need to prophesy today your own victory rather than agreeing with the devil for your own defeat. Just say, the Lord will. That's what David said. God will deliver me from this Philistine. And then you look at verse 38, as David goes on in verse 38, it says then that Saul, then Saul dressed him in his own tunic. He put a coat of armor on him and a bronze helmet on his head. And David fastened on his sword over the tunic and tried walking around because he was not used to them. I cannot go in these, he said to Saul, because I'm not used to them. You know, sometimes the world wants to dress you up in their armor. They want to make you follow their formula and do their 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 formula that has hasn't worked for them, but somehow they expect it to work for you. Saul's armor wasn't working for Saul. And he tried to put it on David and David said, "This is not how I've won my past victories. I won them trusting in the God of Israel." Don't let someone else dress you in their armor. Ephesians 6:13 says, "Therefore, put on the full armor of God." so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you've done everything to stand, stand firm then. And he begins to list the spiritual armor that God has given his children. Today, don't be fighting in in man's armor and then wondering why God hasn't come through for you. Pick up the armor of God and, and, and go out with the shield of faith, the breastplate of righteousness, the sword of the Spirit, quoting God's Word, and you will see what God can do for you. Now let's wind this up today. Look at, at verse 40 here. In verse 40 it says, Then he took his staff in his hand. He chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in a pouch of his shepherd's bag, and with his sling in his hand approached the Philistine. I like that because what David's doing here is he's getting what he's used to. He's used to taking his sling and and, and flinging those rocks at uh, an animal that come to attack one of his sheep. And he's like, I know what I can use. I know what's worked for me in the past. Friend, I'm here today to tell you, go to some of those favorite scriptures. Go to 53, chapter 53 of Isaiah and, and, and quote the, uh, the word of God whenever you start being sick or you're, you're facing a, a, a real oppression or a real attack from the enemy. Go to God's word. Get what you're used to, what you, what's been trusted in the past, and you will see God come through for you. Get a picture of this. David rejects the king's armor and he picks up his staff. It's just an old stick. He gets five smooth stones. Now, uh, I probably would have rather gotten some rough stones. They might have hurt more. But he takes these five smooth stones and with his sling in his hand, and you know what he did? He actually ran towards the giant. God doesn't want you to run from your problem. He wants you to run towards the enemy with the weapons that he gives us in Ephesians 6. Pick up the shield of faith. Trust what God's Word declares. He is faithful, the Bible says. Even unto a thousand generations, God will come through for you, friend. Thank you for joining me today on Fresh Oil. Walk in grace, friend. God loves you. He really, really does.